I'm building a structure kit with interior details and lighting on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, today I'm bringing you another structure kit build, but one with a little more detail to it than maybe some of the other builds that I've done in the past. Definitely some things that I'm looking at doing more of in the future. Today, I'm going to be building a structure combination that includes a kit as well as some roomettes interior details and some lighting. Now, lighting is something that I'm working on incorporating a lot more of into my current layout. I've been doing some lighting all the way from my very first layout. In fact, the first layout I ever built was a small 4x4 portable in-scale layout, and I lit some structures on it back in the old days, in the days of running DC, using grain of wheat light bulbs and some resistors. Do you remember those days of lighting? Well, today we're not using grain of wheat anymore. We're using LEDs. We're powering them in many different ways. What I'm going to show you today is an easy way to power some lighting and install some lighting that anybody can do because it's really a plug and play kind of a system. In the future, we're going to be looking at doing some more lighting using things like Arduinos and the, uh, the, the auxiliary power bus that I have installed on my layout to be able to do some, some random sequencing and those sorts of things. But for today, we're doing what is included in this kit. Now, I need you to know that the kit that I'm doing today was a sample provided by Woodland Scenics to my friends at Model Railroad News. They shared it with me for the sake of building this video, but I'm also going to be reviewing this kit in a future article, in a future uh, edition of Model Railroad News. So be sure and watch for that as I share with you all of my impressions of this kit as we build it. Well, enough talk. We're going to head over to the workbench and I'm going to show you exactly how we build this kit, get the lighting in it, and see what it looks like. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Today, I am building the Grafton Hotel Combo from Woodland Scenics. Woodland Scenics has developed a number of these combo kits which combine a Woodland Scenics DPM structure kit, sets of roomettes interior scenes designed specifically for that structure, and several Woodland Scenics just plug lights designed to fit with the roomettes. In the case of the Grafton Hotel combo, it includes a Hilltown Hotel kit five sheets of roomettes, enough to create eight hotel room interiors and the lobby and shops for the ground floor, and 10 LEDs. You'll need some other items to complete the lighting setup, but we'll discuss that in a few minutes. The build begins with a structure kit. I've used several Hilltown hotel kits in the past to kit bash the Holt Hotel in Wichita Falls, Texas for my layout, so I'm quite familiar with this kit. DPM kits are great, easy structure kits, and in fact, some of the very first structure kits that I ever built were DPM kits. It comes with exterior walls of injection molded plastic, enough styrene for the roof, clear acetate for window glazing, and some styrene to support the roof and other detail uses. The first step is to remove the injection gates from the walls and sand them smooth. DPM structure kit walls are quite thick, as are the injection gates, so some hefty side cutters are ideal for this task. One item to be aware of on this kit is that the front and one side are stone, and the ends of these walls where they meet are mitered to make a nicely detailed corner. You will sometimes see some bits of flash on the structure. I carefully scrape it off by dragging the edge of a hobby knife sideways across it. The top of the cornice is beveled, so I sanded the injection gates away from these with a sanding stick, being careful to maintain a consistent bevel. 
The straight edges I sanded with my Sand It from Micromark, which keeps the edges straight and square as I sand them. This is a fantastic tool, and if you'd like to pick one up, I have a Micromark promo code that'll save you 10% in the description down below. You can also sand the straight edges with a large piece of medium grit sandpaper laying flat on your work surface. Be careful, again, because the end of one of the walls has brick detail on it that will show. You do not want to sand this end and thus remove the brick detail. The front door is inset into the front wall. This inset is created using some provided styrene strip. I marked the strip to the height of the door and cut the two needed pieces with my chop it, also a micro mark tool, and then cemented them to the front edges of the door with solvent cement. I then cemented this small assembly to the back of the front wall. Before going any further, I washed the walls in warm soapy water to remove any release agent, fingerprints or oils, or any other residue that might inhibit paint adhesion and mar the finished surface. I rinsed the walls and blotted away excess water and then allowed them to air dry. Once dry, I used a magnetic corner clamp to align the corners for gluing. I started with the beveled corner as this was the most crucial to get perfect. Once I was happy with the alignment, I applied solvent cement. The solvent cement that I use is MEK with some bits of styrene dissolved into it for a filler. This is a thick joint, so I applied the solvent cement somewhat liberally from the back with a micro brush. Once the first corner was secure, I repeated the process with the other front corner. This is a basic butt joint, but again, make sure you note which piece has the brick detail on the end and assemble the joint so that that brick detail shows and is not inside the joint. At this point, I decided that because this structure is very shallow in depth, I was going to make it a background building against the backdrop, and thus I will not be using the rear wall. If you were to use the rear wall of this structure, you would be far better off to wait and glue it in place at the end of the process after the interiors and the lighting have been added. I airbrushed my structure with Vallejo blue-gray paint to simulate a limestone or gray granite structure, which are common in the part of the world where I live. I painted the brick portion gray as well to fill in the mortar joints with gray color. I painted the inside of the structure Vallejo anthracite gray to help prevent any light leakage from the roomette LEDs. To create the brick color on the end, I dry brushed the brick with Vallejo orange brown paint. I used various brush strokes to try to avoid the stroke marks and used very little paint at a time to try to paint just the raised portions of the brick and avoid getting it in the mortar detail. It didn't come out perfectly, but I was pleased with the overall effect, especially for an end wall that will not be a focal point of attention. The brick wall has an accent row that protrudes above the ground floor. I touched this up as well as the window sills with the blue-gray color. When all the paint was dry, it was time to age the structure a little. I applied an India ink wash to the entire structure. My wash consists of one teaspoon of India ink in a pint of 70% isopropyl alcohol. Now here I made a mistake that turned out to be a happy one. I tried to dab the excess wash off of the structure, but on the brick wall this began to remove a bit of the orange brown paint that I had dry brushed. As soon as I saw this, I stopped and tried to touch up the paint with a brush, but quickly found out that I needed just to leave well enough alone until it dried. Once dry, the effect looked like aged brick with some of the surface beginning to decay, which I actually like, so I left it alone. Again, a happy mistake. Once the India ink dried, it was time to begin the painstaking process of hand painting the windows. I used an 18 aught round brush to apply basic white paint to the sills and the trim. 
This process is not really difficult, but it definitely takes time, patience, and a steady hand. I took my time doing only a few windows at a time and then taking a break. And I made an entire video about how I do this kind of detail painting using this structure as an illustration. I'll place a link to that video in an end screen at the end of this one. I use the same process to paint the windows on the brick end wall. To apply the window glazing, I cut strips of the clear acetate just slightly taller than the height of the windows, then cut them to width to fit pairs of windows on the upper floors. I glued them in place with canopy glue. I like canopy glue for this application as it does not haze the acetate, and if it were to bleed a tiny bit onto the visible part of the glazing, it dries clear and is virtually invisible. The roomettes are a breeze to assemble. They are interior scenes printed on cardstock and laser cut and perforated. I cut them from the carrier sheet with a sharp hobby knife. Take care to ensure that you do not cut the perforated lines as they are the fold lines, not the cut lines. I used a metal straight edge to ensure a straight fold along the perforation, but it was probably unnecessary as the laser perforations fold very easily. I again used canopy glue to glue the tabs down and create the shadow boxes for each scene. Clamps made from tiny decorative clothespins work great for holding these in place while the glue dries. I then repeated the process for each room scene. One thing that you should do, and that I forgot several times, is to cut and remove the ceiling opening for the LED. It's much easier to cut it out while flat on the cutting surface than after the roomette has been assembled. One of the ground floor roomettes is a liquor store and a couple of flat shelves are provided for that scene. To install these shelves, I cut two square corners from the carrier sheet to serve as stands behind the flat details. I glued these stands on the back of the shelves, then located them where they seemed to work best in the scene and glued them to the floor. When preparing to install the roomettes, read each gluing tab carefully. Some fold up while others fold down, and if you fold them twice, it's very easy for them to break off. Each tab has instructions printed right on it as to which way it should fold. The roomette's instructions advise spreading a bit of glue over the perforations to prevent light leakage. I took this one step further. I mixed a drop of black paint with some canopy glue and spread that over the perforations. Ultimately, this worked very well to prevent light bleed. I separated the just plug LEDs for installation. The supplied LEDs fit perfectly into the laser cut holes in the roomettes. I glued them to the ceiling from the outside with canopy glue, then reinforced them with a piece of painter's tape. Ten LEDs are supplied with this combo kit, but there are actually spaces for 12. On top of that, one of my supplied LEDs did not work, so I ordered three additional LEDs to replace the one that didn't work and to light the other two rooms. To power the LEDs, you will need some sort of power supply. Now, the instructions for the roomettes names three different options, but these LEDs are created to work with the Woodland Scenics Just Plug system, so I use that. I'll give you my evaluation of the Just Plug system in a few minutes. To light the 10 LEDs without modification, you will need one light hub, three port sharing devices, and one power supply. I decided it would be fun to have some of the lights turn on and off to create a sense of action and life in the structure. So I used one expansion hub, one light hub, one port sharing device, and one sequencing light hub, as well as the power supply. This allowed me to power 12 LEDs with four of them 
turning on and off at random intervals and in a random sequence. All of the LEDs are dimmable through these systems and the random sequence frequency can be adjusted with a sequencing hub as well. I'll share with you the cost of all of these items in just a few moments. I connected all of the components and tested everything. I then installed the remainder of the lights in the roomettes and decided on the placement of all of the roomettes and the sequencing lights and began gluing the roomettes into the structure from the back with canopy glue. Some of the rooms are designed to go in a corner and can be visible from the windows on two sides of the structure, so be sure and place these carefully. A small clamp helped me hold some of the scenes in place while the glue dried. Some of the tape and the side walls were going to be visible through the windows that didn't have scenes in them, so I painted these black to hide them. I cut and glued in place the styrene roof, then painted the edges of the white styrene with black paint. I then cut and installed a piece of 600 grit wet dry sandpaper to give the roof some texture. I had a few roof detail parts on hand, so I added a couple of old looking AC units to the roof. These were not part of the original kit. Finally, I used some Monroe Models weathering powders to weather the roof. Some white to weather the sandpaper to gray it up a little bit, and some rust colors for the AC units. To close things up, I cut a piece of black poster board and friction fit it in the back. And with this, the structure was ready to install on the layout. This shot is just a temporary placement on my layout as I'm not sure where the structure is going to go yet. But you can see the interiors of the scenes here and I've sped up the random sequencing of the lights and also brightened the lights a little bit for the sake of video. In real life, these will be a little dimmer and the sequence will go much more slowly to look more realistic. In the future, I think I'm going to add some window shades and some people figures in some of the rooms to create an even better sense of life. Now let's talk a little bit about price. I'm going to quote you the MSRP of these items, but many of them can be found from various retailers less expensively. The Grafton Hotel combo lists for $44.99. The additional lighting components as recommended in the kit list for a combined $47.96 without the power supply. The components that I described here for sequencing some of the lights list for $70.96 without the power supply. The 24 volt power supply lists for $24.99. Now, in my personal opinion, if you're working on a small layout and want to light just one or a few structures, or if you lack skills to install and power LEDs separately or to program them for sequencing with something like an Arduino, then the Just Plug system may work for you, especially if you're in a little bit of a hurry. If, however, you want to light a large number of structures, or if you have or are willing to learn some basic skills needing to do this kind of wiring and to install something like an Arduino for sequencing, you can do this same lighting job for much less cost. The roomettes are fantastic. They look great and install really, really easily. And of course the DPM structures are an awesome basic staple to many model railroads and have been for many years. Overall, the Grafton Hotel Kit was a fun kit to build and it will definitely find a home in one of the cities on my layout. Well, that's how I built this kit. And again, if you're looking for something easy to do, a plug and play kind of a system for building a kit with interiors and lightings, uh, these combos may be perfect for you. Again, as I said, that just plug system can get a little pricey when it comes to buying all the components. 
But also, if you're plugging some components together for multiple structures, it can help you with the cost. Also, there are power supply options that can save you significantly on uh, these particular systems, so you might look into that. What I quoted you is the top-end MSRP price for using all of the components exactly as listed in the kit, as well as, as recommended for the sequencing that I did. But there are ways to do the same job and save yourself some money. So again, the Hilltown Hotel is a great little DPM structure, and this Grafton Hotel combo may be something that you want to try as well. Now, I mentioned in the video that I've used the Hilltown Hotel to build the Holt Hotel in Wichita Falls, Texas for my layout, and I made a series of videos about how I did that entire kit bash structure, and I'm going to include it in a card in the corner of your screen right now. You may want to check that out. Also, be sure to check out my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below. Some of the things you saw in the video today, you can pick up down there, as well as my Micromark promo code and tons of other great links. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, be sure to check out the links on your screen. And join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?